So when you are bilingual, you have an understanding actually of the complexity of uh, identity. <laughs> So Fraser, in a world where we're connected through the internet to everyone, why is it important to be bilingual? Oh, I think there are two aspects to the answer there. The first one actually is a very concrete um, reply, which is about connecting, talking. Um, and of course, the more languages you can speak, the more community, communities you can talk to. Uh, and in fact, the more information you have access to. I think there's a more interesting reply though, actually, which is a question of belonging. So when you are bilingual, you have an understanding actually of the complexity of uh, identity. So I'm British, I was born in Britain and, and I grew up in Britain, but my children's identity is really quite different. They describe themselves as British, but they were born here in uh, Switzerland, they've lived in France, they've lived in Singapore, and they are connected to a whole range of communities. And so when they talk about themselves, actually they have a much more fluid understanding of who they are. Um, and I think that's true with the, a more connected world, actually people's identities are much more fluid. And bilingual people, I think, have more of an insight into the complexity of that belonging. So I think there's two, you can speak to other people, but also it gives you an insight into the kinds of lives those other people live. Now, why is it important to learn a language to help you prosper in your own career? Uh, well, again, there are, there are two answers to this. There's a very concrete answer. So if you speak multiple languages, you have an easier way into speaking to peers or feeling comfortable, for example, with your colleagues or perhaps understanding uh, your customers. There are other things, though, which are interesting. So lots of research on bilingualism shows that bilingual people have a uniqueness uh, in their brain function. So it seems that bilingual people are better at executive function, by like organising their thoughts. They are more capable of dealing with distraction. Uh, there's some research to show actually that bilingual people have better function in memory. So they have a cognitive advantage here, which they can bring to bear. That doesn't mean everybody who's bilingual is superhuman, not at all. But if you take a person, it's more likely that a bilingual person will be functioning at a slightly higher cognitive level. So you can bring that to bear in your everyday work as well. Now, multiple millionaires have credited their success, well, part of their success, to knowing three languages as a minimum. How will knowing multiple languages help you get to that success? Well, not being a millionaire, but being successful in life generally. Well, absolutely. So not everyone who's bilingual is a multimillionaire, but often when people are talking about these cases, they're thinking of Mark Zuckerberg, of course, who, who speaks fluent, uh, speak fluent Mandarin, uh, Bloomberg, for example, and his Spanish, which was uh, uh, vital actually in his dealings. Um, closer to home, the CEO of Nestle, for example, is fluent in six languages. So they automatically have uh, a flexibility of mind. I think the, the, the fact that a person can learn these languages, often later in life, uh, is an indication of a, a willingness to learn, a commitment to carrying on learning throughout their career, understanding that you can make use of opportunities that present themselves. So perhaps the, the multilingualism of, of these famous uh, millionaires is a symptom or a function of the kind of people they are. And of course, they make good use of that language. They're the kind of people who seize an opportunity and go forwards. Um, it might not be the multilingualism per se. It, it's probably just the kind of person they are. Now, for my final question, do you have to be fluent in the language to be classed as being bilingual? Uh, well, this is a really interesting point. So the view of what a bilingual is has changed enormously over the last 10, 15 years of educational research. So the original model of a bilingual, which is called a balanced bilingual, is a person who was perfectly fluent in one language and perfectly fluent in another language, which meant that they could talk in perfect uh, accent about anything in any kind of situation. But the reality is that very few people have that kind of capacity. Most people have complementary language usage, which means they, they understand this particular situation in one language and they can use another language in another situation. So the, the view of bilingualism now, actually, is much more people laying on a spectrum. 
And so the, there is a functional view of bilingualism, which is becoming more important. And that's all about, can you get what you need to say out in a particular language, or can you achieve the kind of tasks you need to achieve in a variety of different languages? And if you can, then you may want to consider that as being bilingual. Well, thank you so much, Fraser, for coming in the studios today and speaking with me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. It's great to be here. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click back and subscribe for more interviews like this.